26. We'll read it. I mean, we've had a, uh, <coughs> a discussion on it. And um, I'll leave it up to the floor to open up on the discussion on the, on the sale by tender. Is everybody happy with the paper taken as read? Uh, I have sort of uh, run through uh, the issue a couple of times uh, in the past, but um, I've not really made any secret of the fact that I believe our current council depot is uh, in need of uh, significant capital injection if we were to hold on to it. Um, the issue was first brought to me a few years ago when I was asked if we would spend three, three to five hundred thousand dollars putting new sheds on there so we could keep uh, equipment under cover. Uh, I wasn't too um, keen on spending significant money in that location, bearing in mind that I thought we would be able to uh, move the depot. Initially, my thoughts were to Owen Delaney Park uh, during the last biennium. That didn't actually come to fruition. However, uh, I believe that um, as an industrial uh, zone site, I believe that uh, location is actually of significant value to us as we move into a phase of trying to reduce our debt uh, and trying to um, basically imp improve our financial bottom line. I asked Alan if he would work with a local real estate company to identify options for us, either through potential lease or, 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 or purchase, and lease obviously becomes the, the, the most preferred option if we're talking short term. Um, and uh, Alan worked with Bailey's Real Estate to identify a suitable location where the garaging, the sheds uh, are already in place and available uh, in the quantities that we would need for our depot location, uh, and hence we proceeded on that basis. And it was a hindrance that it had happened to be owned by the Cooper Family Trust. I, I then asked Alan if he would go the extra step and get clear of the Auditor General, um, and uh, whilst Alan did that, uh, the Auditor General wrote back to us and told us that we didn't actually need to, but um, from my perspective, I wanted to. Uh, be certain that uh, from a process perspective everything was above board, um, bearing in mind the, uh, the nature of the people involved. Yeah, I was just wondering what, what is the approximate value of the Mahai Street? Uh, current estimate is between two and a half to three million. Well, yeah. Have we had a re more recent valuation? Yeah, the capital value is just over one and a half, um, is about 3.41 hectares. But, um, we would look at potentially um, investigating access to Crown Road, which would also increase the value of the property. I must assume that the location of this suits all the different uses of the, um, of the depot. You know, it was proximal to all the you know, homes and everything like that. That's why it's out here. It seems to be on a limb way out on the other side. Well, I can speak from the last triennium where I was chairman of the Owen Delady um, subcommittee and I know that that was looked at. I mean, this has been talked about over the last three years um, of shifting um, the depot and, and the facilities <coughs> up there. Are, uh, well, the whole depot really is quite rough and haggard up there and, and is it an asset that we need to get rid of and shift? And it was under the agreement that um, Owen Delaney look at, uh, the subcommittee look at um, going up there. So it has been on the cards for the last three years, and I suppose with the ETA going through, we looked at the Owen Delaney Park as being a, a good place because it's, it's, it's in where a lot of the uh, activity goes on, like Spa Park, um, Pickling Park, and all those areas in Crown Park accessible. So I suppose this depot is very much accessible uh, to the same area. Yeah, I mean, from a business perspective, there's two issues. One is the existing depot location, which is industrial zoned. It's, it's a key big area of industrial zoned land that if we manage to fulfil our economic desires, i.e. bring a new business to Topol, it's actually a very valuable site because it's already serviced. And we would be able to sell or lease this site as of tomorrow uh, based on the fact that it's serviced and therefore we'll be able to realise a good value for it. A lot of the other land that we have is unserviced and we would have to spend money putting infrastructure in place to make it happen. So from a business perspective, this is creating the capacity to get into that land sale or land lease for business very quickly. Um, so that's one aspect of it, and, and start to realise some dollars to pay off some debt. The other side is the depot. 
I don't believe that this location suggested in this paper is the ultimate location for our depot. I believe that this is a stepping stone to somewhere better. Uh, we did discuss in the last Triennium Iron Delaney Park. Uh, from my perspective, we didn't achieve um, the, the location within, within Iron Delaney Park, which is fine. However, we did have some conversations about a location potentially on the other side of the road at Owen Delaney Park around where the ice rink is, is spoken about. I don't think we've ruled that one out yet, uh, but we need to actually have a stepping stone uh, of getting from A to B, uh, and this, this provides the ideal solution of a good price for a location where we don't have to invest any capital, um, so it will tie us over and the, the initial lease agreement is for a five plus five, so I, am, I envisage it will be a five year lease, and if we still haven't resolved the depot location by then, we've got the option to increase by another five, but I would like to think that we have um, found a, a more suitable location for the depot at some point in the future. So the reason we concentrated our examination around that industrial area for a, uh, a temporary, uh, let's call it a temporary depot location. Uh, is that I got the message from the staff that they didn't want to move, uh, they were happy where they, they are, but they still wanted this capital injection into the depot. So I've sort of taken the halfway compromise of giving them the capital injection by leasing a premises that provides everything that they need from a garaging perspective, uh, but it doesn't incur significant capital expenditure from council's perspective. my perspective and the assessment that we've done, it's below market rental. I suppose it's inevitable when a certain elected member owns half of town that they're going to run into these issues and I think we need to look past that because it's the perception from the ratepayers will be of, on the wrong side of, of what we know. But I I'm, trust our CEO that he's made a prudent business decision. We're always going to run into this if, if there's a large land only in one. Neither the Cooper Family Trust or the Poynton Family Trust are both, so either or. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of questions. So, so this new lease site would uh, accommodate all the depot services, which is parks, water, and what about the, the storage for the records and the and the uh, eye carving? That's in, and a separate building. that's in a separate building on uh, within a different area. And that, I don't even know if we own if we own that site. Oh yeah, we still. I think well, we lease it. Don't we? Well, we own. Yeah, we own it. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't have any intention of moving any of the archive records. There, but I didn't think we did. Yeah. Sorry, Councillor William, or just Councillor Heckler. Oh, that's all right. And um, did we make any other inquiries to other agents, or did we only go through bailers? We went through Westman uh, Property Sorry. Solutions, yeah. and Sorry, they um, came up with about six or seven different sites, which we investigated, and this was value for money. Um, the best one to meet our short-term needs. And why we are suggesting Bailey's as the um, agent to handle Mahoe Street uh, is because I've been working uh, with Gary Harwood from Bailey's. Uh, remember we gave um, Harvey's the Ashworth Park. We are currently negotiating with to other real estate firms in Taupo in respect of two of our other properties just to be seen to um, be sharing it out. Remember we, we drew a name out of the hat type of scenario um, and that's the approach we'll continue to take is to share out amongst the um, local real estate businesses um, property by property. 
Um, just a question about the choice of Westermans to evaluate the property solutions. That was the same approach, was it? It was just drawn out of a hat, literally, or um, share it around, or how were they cho- how were they chosen as the evaluation yeah. agency? We had been um, discussing some industrial commercial aspects with um, uh, part of that business, which was the Bailey's part, and it was just a natural extension of that. Um, we will never get anywhere if we have to go through a drawing lot process every time we want to um, work with the private sector. What we're trying to do is to ensure that over time we deal evenly with the private sector. Any other questions? I've probably only just got one. Is just how, how confident are we selling the Mahoe Street Depot, the reduced debt? Well, um, there was more than one party that was interested in the old um, Carter Holt site, which is not too far away from that. Um, those deals have not yet been completed, and um, there is one or two parties that are interested in perhaps this site as well, or as an alternative. But um, who's to tell in today's market what's going to happen? Any other questions? Sorry, Councillor. Mr Green might be in a better position to answer that one. Um, it's basically a legal situation. We're still working through it, but there's a, a segregation strip along Crown Road, um, which is that little planting strip. So we're just working through um, the status of that and what we'd need to go through to get a form and access through there. So um, we're too early in the process to, to be able to tell you the exact process, but um, every, every legal instrument has a way of undoing that, but we need to go through a process. Um, just before you put the resolution, Mr Chairman, um, would you consider um, splitting the resolution so um, it allows people to vote either for one or two, and not both together? Um, well, they go hand in hand, don't they? Well, I've got no problem with the uh, the council. Uh, it's, uh, it makes good sense to uh, uh, sell the uh, council depot. I have some real concerns about the leasing uh, situation. Because of the site? <coughs> no, because of the owner. Well, I suppose, you know, that's... Um something that all of us um, as council representatives have to um, decide here today is, is, exactly. is um, one that um, it is owned by a uh, representative of, of the council and as uh, councillor Johnson said you know he does own a big portion it's always going to come up eventually um, somewhere along the line with, with either of us we're all um, representatives um, in different areas in our community and, and the conflict of interest always uh, comes to head. But I think each one of you have to um, um, look in yourself and who you represent and, and, and come up with a decision. I think it's very hard to split these two. I think it's a, um, you've either got to decide yes or no because one follows the other. Um, you know, if it's, um, it's sold, we need to lease somewhere. Um, so, yeah, how do you... The way I viewed it when Alan was uh, doing the work for me with, with uh, the, the real estate agent was that I was after a patch of land with sheds uh, and that's how I viewed it, is it's a patch of land with sheds and that's what we needed. Uh, the owner to me was secondary at the time. Uh, once once I realised who the owner was, we got the confirmations that we needed through Audit New Zealand that we proceeded uh, appropriately with the right process. Councillor Cooper. <coughs> yeah, yeah, the Chairman, not. I'm quite happy to accept <coughs> what Council has put before us in terms of the one and the two of the resolution. 
market value and that's fair enough. Um, okay, when we get into the second term of the lease, that might cost us a bit more. That's just how leases work, but that's negotiable, I guess, and covered in the terms of the lease. Um, <coughs> just because one of our members owns or is uh, a party uh, or the ownership of this land, I don't think it's, um, in this case, a, a point, if you like, against, a sole point of against allowing this change to occur. Before I take any more questions, I'd like to ask a question um, to our CEO. How much would it cost us to spend on the present depot over the next five years um, to either um, improve it to the standard that it should be um, compared to going into this um, site where it's not costing us anything? Are we looking at spending a hundred or two hundred thousand on on improvements to the? It's, it's a very difficult question to answer, but based uh, retrospectively on the requests that I've had ver through various annual plan processes, it could be up to half a million dollars. I'm not saying that's how much we would spend on the existing depot location, but that is what roughly staff have been asking me to spend on new sheds and upgraded office facilities. Uh, with this location those sheds and the office facilities are provided as part of the lease. I understand various concerns, but I think side of that it's a financial and operational decision, not a decision of morals. You know, like it is financially we, that's what you people are there for. We trust you to make a financial decision and, and regardless of who owns the site, if it fits what we we're after, that's what we've got to look at. That's that's the real question being asked here. Um, I, I potentially share some of <coughs> Barry's concerns, but I guess my concerns specifically perhaps resolve around, revolve around. But given the, especially given the sensitivity of the, of the issue, that um, a, perhaps a little more arm's length might have been appropriate in terms of the particular real estate people who have been chosen to review the appropriate sites, and that's where my concerns lie. So, you know, I'm just a little more interested in what the process and evaluation criteria have been and that sort of thing. Um, because, large part because I think this will um, potentially cause some interest from the public and I would like to as an elected representative know a bit more about that so if I am questioned about it I can actually answer those questions. So yeah, just to flag my concerns, they're, more, they're around that issue. Yeah. Exactly the same, this is a huge sensitive issue this because uh, we've got no assurance that the press is going to see it the same way we're seeing it at this moment, having all this information. So I think we have to be aware of, aware of that in such a big number. So I just endorse what Barry Stratford said there. Mr. Williams? Chairman, I, I, I believe um, the consensus around there is I believe I'll stay with the suggested resolution that's in the in the book. Um, so I'll then ask for a mover and a seconder for the suggested resolution, which reads: Number one, the council agrees to lease 86 Myro Street for the term of five years with a five-year right of renewal. And number two, that six and seven Mahoe Street be sold by tender through Bailey's Real Estate with a closing date of the 29th of April 2011. All those in favour? Could, could, could you record that I abstain, please? The reasons that I don't see that due transparency has been processed through this um, the system. Thank you. Um, I'll abstain as well for the reasons earlier um, highlighted. Really, it's just a case of more information. I would have liked to have seen more of an arm's length of the evaluation, as I stated. Um, so I'll abstain. Those against?
might as well say good night. Um, yeah. members of the public anyway. um, well we are going to go into confidence well actually first if we go into confidence then we can turn webcam off and what have you I see it's still going I move that the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings <coughs> of this meeting uh, in reliance of section 48.1a of the local government official information and meetings act mover please yep move Kevin seconded uh, councillor Mincer all those in favour aye, aye. just before we uh, turn off the web